it go. Yeah, come on. Oh, I'm satisfied. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, across our beloved empire to today's video in the Grand Arena Coliseum, where we are talking in depth about the last character in Galaxies in 2022, and that is the one and only Dr. Afra. We unlocked her today, did a banger intro video for her, but at the end of the day, what is she like in Galaxies? And let me just say this, I love this character. So much fun beating a lot of Galactic Legends before Datacrons and Omicrons. And I think the thing that's gonna sell a lot of people, Darth Vader is coming back on top, baby, as a Galactic Legend Destroyer. What more is there to say? She beats Galactic Legends, a lot of droid firepower, Darth Vader being a Galactic Legend killer. Boop! I love him that so far, but let's get into it and talk more about her. Here's what you need to know about Dr. Aphra. Because of BT and Trip being on her team, she gets 50% turn meter for each of those droids, meaning she's gonna start off with a 100% turn meter. She's gonna outrun basically every team and even Galactic Legends legends which means speed's not going to be that important as we talk about mods later on into the video as well as the omicrons secondly the ability you're likely going to open up with is rogue archaeology when you start off with 100 percent terminator outrunning galactic legends rogue archaeology can increase the cooldowns of the enemies immediately and inflict doubt which prevents things like bonus turn meter and when you're increasing cooldowns right away most galactic legends don't know what to do and they can't do anything except doing a basic as well as the rest of the team which gives you a huge head start and you're gonna want to spam debuffs on the enemy team number one when you have the omicron especially you're going to get turn meter so think of it almost like an emperor palpatine lead where when you have the omicron every debuff you're applying is granting 10 percent turn meter for dark side droids and dark side scoundrels unfortunately not for darth vader and you also want to spam debuff because she is the second character with a siphon mechanic kind of like supreme leader kylo ren every time a dark side ally is applying debuffs they're gaining five percent offense which is astronomical and secondly you're giving dr f for five stacks of siphon so when darth vader does that aoe for Force crush when bt does an aoe burning effect you're applying debuffs increasing your offense increasing your stacks to siphon where supreme leader kyle ren siphons away mastery dr raffer is going to siphon away potency from the enemy team the more siphon she gets the more potency she can take away from the enemy. Through that rogue archaeology ability, she's going to siphon potency from the target enemy, increasing her potency by whatever percentage of siphon she has in her, which goes up pretty fast into the thousands. And as she increases her potency, she's going to be feeding stats to the team. To Dark Side Droids, Dark Side Scoundrels, Darth Vader, Chrysanthemum, giving them an extra defense, offense, and tenacity, equal to 30% of Dr. Aphra's potency. And the Hack Commander Droid instead gets 60% which by the way we haven't talked about that she's got a spawnable unit closest we're gonna get to a playable commando droid on dangerous tech she could spawn a separatist commando droid so long as there were no galactic legends and all allies were dark side scoundrels dark side droids chrysanthemum or darth vader and when you use that ability you're getting potency up which again increase their potency increase the stats for the team she could revive droids and especially once you get the omicrons you're gonna do bonus damage based off her potency through rogue archaeology and with the omicron slapped on you're gonna do bonus damage equal to 50 percent of afra's potency and that is gonna be huge and the great thing about her too is that she's not really pulling away from any important teams out there so far the team that i'm thinking is obviously gonna be bt and trip if you're not running them with her you i think you're insane because you want to get that 100 percent to her right off the very get go and they hit insanely hard especially bt who's the basically the dark trooper of the team and i highly recommend darth vader as the fourth member of this team with the offense increased capabilities the tons of siphon he's gonna feed over the dr afra he's basically doing the damage heavy lifting alongside bt to take out galactic legends in that fifth spot you're gonna have some flexibility i've loved imperial probe Dread, a character not really well loved or used in the game buff this spells have been huge and works well with darth vader gives darth vader extra speed by the way ijd also works well in that last spot ability blocks 
Target Lock being a healing immunity mechanic hits really dang hard as well with Dr. Aphra. We've tried some other stuff. I even though they call out Cursantha, which I think was mostly just a friendly lore reference because Cursantha and Dr. Aphra had a lot of encounters inside of her comic book history. I didn't like Cursantha in the lineup, didn't add much, and he's way better inside of a job of the Hut team. But we also tried some other things like HK47. That wasn't crazy about it, but you might be able to utilize it. Even freaking IG86 was doing some amazing stuff with that massive burst of that he's got. Luckily, the droids are needed to unlock after, so you have your core three. Likely, you're going to have Darth Vader. I'd say the fifth spot is definitely a flex spot that you could do a lot of stuff with, but I think IGD at Probe are going to be the main go-tos for right now. Remember, they need to be dark side, Scoundrel Droid, Kersant, and Darth Vader. You don't have a lot of flexibility. So hopefully that was able to give you a rough idea in general what she's doing. Because now what I'm going to show you is her non-Omicron, non-Datacron gameplay. And keep in mind, this is just from Squad Arena. She's going to be way better once we get into Grand Arena and you can start utilizing her Omicron. She's able to easily dunk on Master Luke teams, take on things like Galactic Legends Raid, basically bringing Darth Vader back as the Galactic Legend, non-Galactic Legend counter to Raid. It seems like even with Ben, of course, Omicron's data crimes can make that easier or harder, potentially. We're able to beat Sith Eternal. And crazy enough, this seems to be the first non-Omicron, non-data crime, non-galactic legend counter to Jabba the Hutt. Jabba the Hutt has been very difficult to beat without galactic legends or specific data crimes. Dr. Raffer with the increased damage on Darth Vader. Darth Vader melts the team to pieces, it seems like. However, we weren't able to get a good win against Lord Vader, although she could pick apart the team, but it didn't get us any wins. And it seems like Master Kenobi and Supreme Leader Kyle Ren are off the table because she relies, basically her core thing is starting off with 100% turn reader, which Master Kenobi and Supreme Leader Kylo Ren both prevent. And then she can't do the cooldown increase, start a turn meter roll. Seems like anything that's gonna stop her from gaining turn meter is gonna be really rough for her to operate. Or even teams that maybe start off before her like a Han Solo, you can stun her. Aiden Versio was able to stun her. What she kind of reminds me of is a more advanced version of the HK-47 droid team that we had way back in the day. She seems to be taking that philosophy, being an ultimate glass cannon, quick out the get-go plays, setting herself up with the team for some massive potency increases, damage increases, and by the time you finally have your cooldowns off and you're ready to finally get a play going, you're already kind of facing some con <laughs> some concerns of characters missing on your team, being defeated, her team getting more defense and offense tenacity, so it's hard to apply debuffs on them and even hit him hard. Now, I've been saying a lot of great things about her. She is a fantastic legacy character, and this reminds me why I despise the Inquisitors and Grand Inquisitors so much because they weren't doing a lot, the Inquisitors that is, unless you're in territories or unless you have a Datacron with Dr. Afra, Her requirements, all of them were amazing to some degree. Hondo being the weakest, but you could still do funny stuff with him. And she's also needed quite a lot like Inquisitors inside of Rise of the Empire. There are gonna be missions which specifically require, and spoiler alert, She's a lot of fun in there too. However, here's what I don't like about Dr. F, but really two things. One, there's not really a tank that we can plug in there that's a dark side scoundrel not needed anywhere else you can't like put in things like l337 because it's a light side droid and that's gonna break up all the specific synergy of dark side scoundrel droids chrysantha darth vader yada 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 the problem is it's a really great opening team but without a taunting tank of some sort yeah that is the biggest weakness of this team so far there just really isn't much to choose from and the second thing that i don't quite like about dr after is oh man the omicrons Unlike Starkiller, which let me say this before I get into this, I find Dr. Aphra a lot more usable outside of Grand Arena than Starkiller did. Day one Starkiller, you couldn't really do much because here's the problem. Starkiller has to do all the heavy lifting on his own. And without the Omicron, it's really hard to do so. With Dr. Aphra, it's basically the whole team doing all the work and she's just supporting them to set him up, which that's what she should do. She's a support character. But what I'm really concerned is the Omicron situation because Starkiller only needs one to operate. The other two are optional, not needed. With her, it almost feels like you're going to need each and every one of them. And I'm hoping we don't need the 3v3 ones that are on BT and Trip. And another downside, the Omicrons on Dr. Aphra are only allowed in 5v5 Grand Arena. The first 5v5 only Grand Arena Omicrons, that's not making me happy. So that means in 3v3, you can't use these. And hopefully, based off what I've seen, I still think she's gonna be really good in 3v3, even without the Omicrons, because again, she's gonna get 100% Terminator. She's gonna increase cooldown. She's gonna have BT and Trip do some amazing things. 
but it sucks saying that you're only gonna have these Omicrons work half the year. So with the Omicrons, I've, had, I've been debating it a lot because um, unlike Starkiller, it's really hard to see a clear indicator on what's the best one. The first one I would recommend if you're on an Omicron budget, we're gonna do all three of them because I love this character, is gonna be the leadership ability. Personally, an extra 30 speed, although you don't really need speed on this team because they rely on tons of turn meter, 30 speed's always nice, but also 50% potency. And what do we talk about potency? Increase the offense, the defense, the tenacity, the bonus damage that you're going to use on the team. And also, whenever the Dark Side Droid or Dark Side Scoundrel allies are inflicting a debuff, they're getting 10% turtles. That means Dr. Rath, when she opens up with Rogue Archaeology, boom, 50% turn meter. When BT does the AoE, boom, 50% turn meter. Too bad Darth Vader can't enjoy this. And also, when enemies are debuffed, they also have 20% tenacity reduction, which means it's going to be a lot easier to, a lot easier to apply debuffs which means the stacks of Siphon are going to be even more powerful and come a lot easier. So this is what I would recommend as probably the number one suspended doctorate. Let's go ahead and slap it on, baby. Woo! All right, number two on the list after a lot of discussion that I had with Pimpo and several others, Droid Savant is going to be the second one I think that's recommended here. This one, I almost argue that this maybe should be number one, mainly because since it's the glass cannon team, the problem is they can die up pretty easily. But if you have damage immunity for dark side droids or dark side scoundrel allies, that's going to buy a glass cannon team a lot of time to get set up again because Dr. F, she can recover protection and whatnot on the team and revive. And whenever a dark side droid is defeated, so trip, BT, probe droid, whatever it might be, IGD-6, IGD-8, you're inflicting a damage over time on all enemies, which again, increases the siphon amount on top of Dr. Aphra. And then you're gonna inflict additional damage over time for each relic level that character has. So if you had relic seven or eight, that's gonna be eight more damage over time potentially. And that is insane amounts of damage over time. And then non-separatist dark side droid, dark side scoundrels, chrysanthemum and whatnot. And unfortunately, not darn Vader. They kept him out. He's already really darn good. They're immune to ability block and healing immunity. Number two, that's what I'm going to recommend here. And then number three, rogue archaeology. Definitely, I think this is maybe the last one for sure. It's more of the leader and unique that you're going to have to debate about. But this here, you're going to deal bonus damage. This is the cooldown increase ability right here and the doubt ability and the siphon potency mechanic that she needs to increase her stats. She's going to deal bonus damage to target enemy based off 50% of her potency. And then she's going to inflict buff immunity, healing immunity, stagger on a target enemy for two turns. That's a lot of control. This one I think you could maybe skip out on, but because I'm a big fan of this character, I'm going to apply all three. But as you see, they all are really important and do a lot of stuff. Unlike Starkiller, who really only needed one, and I kind of like that about Starkiller. You just need one and you're done. And mods on this character, you don't need to worry about speed. With 100% turn meter and that extra 30 speed on the lead, you're kind of golden. She's going to outrun most teams, 95% of teams, just because BT and Trip are there. So it should be very straightforward. You need to focus on potency for this character. It's potency sets with some good potency secondary. I would probably opt for a different primary. You don't need crit damage on her, but definitely you want a potency cross. My gosh, don't miss out on that. Just whatever you do, just make sure you get as much potency on her as possible. Because remember, if you have the Omicron, she's gonna get an extra 50%. So just as a starting point, she's at 200% potency. And as the siphons, the debuffs increase, the siphons increase, she keeps using Rogue Archaeology. She's going to have tens of thousands of potency throughout the course of a battle. So that's going to wrap it up for this initial gameplay character review of Dr. Afra. Let me know what you guys think of this character. It's a character that I know not a very popular character in, in terms of the Star Wars universe. Not many know about this character. I will say didn't see a lot of hype built around this character. But what I can say is this cookie is a lot of fun. And when you're looking at massive glass cannon, Darth Vader destroying with a little bit of droid destruction sprinkled in there as well, you can kind of see why I'm really excited for this character. And uh, so far, this character has a better day one impression than Starkiller. And they're also going to be very important for the longevity of the game because, well, they're specifically called out for Rise of the Empire. Thank you so much for coming out today. Leave that like, comment down below, subscribe to our ever-growing empire. And always remember that it's great to be in the empire today. Oh, it's great to be in the Empire